Welcome. This is the first of a number of videos in which we explore how a file is backed onto the secondary storage or the disk. Let's look at some code. Let's say we have this uh, simple C++ code. First executable line, we go ahead and open up a file. Of course, it's called cat.jpg, because why not? And it's open in read-only mode. What gets returned is a file descriptor. As we know now about file descriptors, this will probably be the third file descriptor. We take that file descriptor and we call lseek. This moves the seek pointer to the location hex 3000. That's the location that we're going to read from the file. And then we make a read call. What gets returned from the read is the amount of bytes that are read. I'm reading from the file. I'm reading into the buffer, which is 8192 in size. Uh, and I'm reading basically from the file 8192 bytes. The question we'd like to answer is for the file, how do we keep the mapping of the logical bytes in the file to the backing storage? This is basically called file allocation. Let's first see what happens on the first lines of code, then we'll look into that problem uh, directly. When I went and opened that file, so when I did the open call, I went to the directory, and the directory structure maps a name to a file control block, or in Linux speak, an inode. And so basically cat.jpg becomes an inode, and that's what the open does, returning basically a, a pointer. In addition to finding the inode, the per process open file table, or the file descriptor table, points to a system-wide table which contains the file control block or the inode. The inode, or file control block, contains the information as to where the backing blocks for that file are on disk. So, we open the file, we get a file control block, so now the file descriptor can access that file control block, and that file control block will tell us where the contents of the file are on disk. In a sense, the problem we're trying to solve is over on the left part of this uh, slide, we have our cat picture. It looks like it contains uh, about seven or eight blocks. Each of those blocks are 4,096 bytes. And you can see we index into that with hex 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, each different blocks. Each of the blocks gets mapped to a disk partition in secondary storage. How does the inode keep track of where each of the blocks for the file lives on the disk itself? There are many different allocation techniques to solve this problem. We'll look at three major groups of these allocation techniques. The first is called contiguous. The next is called link, and there's a couple of different versions of the linked uh, mechanism. And then finally, the one that's used today is kind of a co combined scheme of indexed. And so we'll look at these three different allocation methods. In this video, let's quickly look at the contiguous because it's the simplest. Here I have a directory which contains five files. Their name is count, tr, mail, list, and f. The inode for those each of those files contains the start location of the block of the file, I'm sorry, and the length of the file. And so for instance, the count file starts at block zero on the disk and it's of length two. The TR file starts at block 14 and it's of length three. The mail file starts at block 19 of length six I'm sorry, the F file starts at block uh, 6 of length 2, and the mail file starts at 19 of length 6. As you can see, the file, the logical file, has to be kept contiguously on the physical backing store. There's some nice things about this technique. One, the amount of metadata that one needs to keep is very small. I just need to keep the starting block and the length of the file. However, 
there's some downsides. First off, growing a file is difficult. So for instance, if the TR file wanted to grow more than two blocks, we'd be out of space. Another positive of this is indexing into the file is good. If I wanted to look at the third block of the mail file, that's easy. I would say 19 plus 3, go to block 22 on the disk and I get it. And then finally, access to the file is usually done sequentially. And so in a contiguous manner, we get a good performance characteristics because we're reading sequential spots on the physical disk itself. This early, um, this type of allocation or file block allocation was done on early operating systems, but it had difficulty in scalability. The main problem being you could not grow a file. In future videos, we'll look at some other more modern techniques for tracking the blocking, the backing blocks for each of the files. Thank you.